Chapter 5. Toward a Communist, Labor, Theory of Value. This chapter, revisits and reconstructs the Marxian labor theory of value by drawing on the communist framework outlined in the previous chapter. CN Note 1. The focus here is on the commoning sources of creativity while staying mindful of the deep interconnections between all four fundamental common sources of true value, as illustrated in Figure 2.1. It argues that, labor, is an outcome of the decommunization of human, and by extension, more than human, creative power through the abstraction and appropriation of infra-processes. To avoid confusion between the abstraction infra-process, which results in the perversion of, creativity, into, productivity, or, creative power, to, labor power, and the abstraction in Marxian theory, the chapter refers to the former as, primary abstraction, and the latter as secondary abstraction, see figure 5.1. Primary abstraction creates labor and labor power outside the inner organization of capitalist production relations where capital's socio ecological frontiers are located. Whereas, secondary abstraction, as Marx theorized, results in the formation of abstract labor and productive capitalist value represented by exchange value and surplus value within the inner organization of capital. This differentiation is critical in helping us avoid productivism both in our interpretation of Marxian value theory and in our post-capitalist alternatives. The chapter will expand on this dichotomy and discuss its potential for resolving major disagreements over the suitability of Marxian value theory in the context of so-called post-industrial capital. The lost commoning origin of labor the key assumption here is that human creativity, understood as a fundamental commons and the efficient cause of true value in the commonest state of living, is perverted into labor under capital. Labor then becomes a material cause, substance, of fetish value by losing its subjectivity as a result of being alienated from its commoning origin. This loss of subjectivity is due to the alienation of labor from its original commoning nature as human creativity, which existed in accord with extra-human creativity. In light of these claims, the question arises as to how well this postulation aligns with Marx's conception of the real abstraction of labor. Unpacking Marx's notion of labor the description of the key categories of labor and production is not unproblematic in Marx's political economic works, see Pomeroy, 2004, page 44. Marx moves back and forth between different levels of analysis, i.e., the general and the historically specific levels, and between pre-capitalist and capitalist modes of production, while using the same terms. This can cause confusion between the normative and analytical treatment of value. However, Marx 1990, page 283, gives an indication of the issue. We shall, therefore, in the first place, have to consider the labor process independently of any specific social formation. Labor is, first of all, a process between man and nature, a process by which man, through his own actions, mediates, regulates, and controls the metabolism between himself and nature. At this general level, Marx practically considers labor as an «efficient cause», using Aristotelian terminology, in shaping the present from the perspective of the future or telos, which is the communally determined good life, Hudis, 2019, page 761. Marx views the «use value» of labor as a creative potential to fulfill genuine human desires and needs. Under capitalism, this natural use value is distorted by being repurposed for generating surplus value fetishized from an exchange value perspective, see Foster 2022. Further expanding upon this logic requires distinguishing between two types of value, true value, defined from the perspective of, more than, human genuine needs fulfillment, and, fetish value, defined from the non-fulfillment viewpoint, see Hosseini 2022a. Failing to make this distinction reduces true value to the labor time necessary only for the reproduction of labor power, which mistakenly conflates the reproduction of commodified labor with the satisfaction of the genuine needs of laborers, their communities, and ecosystems. To address the challenges in Marx's analysis, we must carefully distinguish between distinct levels of analysis and use appropriate terms. By so doing, we can better understand the nature of labor and production in different social formations and develop a more nuanced understanding of value that reflects the primacy of fulfilling genuine human and ecological needs. 
Figure 5.1 displays the perversion of human creative power as a commoning source of true value into labor as a source of capitalist value through the primary and secondary abstractions and appropriations. Marx describes labor in general as a human productive subjectivity, or a life producing life activity through which humanity reproduces its existence through material interchange with the inorganic nature. It is a productive activity that is a mediation where the unity of man and nature is established and humanity as a species being is realized, see Starosta, 2022, pp. 119–124. Human beings actualize their bodily vital powers through the conscious and transformative application of the productive powers of labor to satisfy their needs. These needs are not solely dictated by their physical nature but are also influenced by sophisticated intellectual and social factors. These factors, in turn, are shaped by the process of production and historically conditioned by modified or humanized natural environments. The product of human life activity, whose form already exists ideally in the actor's imagination at the beginning of the production process, will thus include both the material goods and services with useful material, symbolic, and or effective effects. The satisfaction of such needs is essential for the reproduction and expansion of the creative powers of individuals and communities. The imminent social character of human creative power at the general level, as, affirmatively, highlighted by Marx and Capital and Grundrisse, implies the capacity of his value theory to envision the origin of labor as a commons. However, except in theoretical abstraction, there is no general level of human productive power that exists in isolation. Instead, it is embedded within social production relations rather than materialized in a vacuum. Labor that gives value to commodities is not transhistorical from Marx's perspective. It is only under capitalism that it appears to be a natural fact of life, see Vitaly 2020. Therefore, there can be no transhistorical essence without roots in the evolutionary development of this original, life-producing life capacity in human societies. It would be an ontologically baseless theoretical abstraction, and therefore a redundant argumentation, if we do not consider the real social formation, no matter how remotely imaginable or relatively historically primitive, that underpins the realization of human creative power in its organic unity with the community and the rest of nature. This unity is one in which human creative power not only produces life inclusive of itself but also draws inspiration from organized life. Thus, it will have no mechanical relationship with the commoning sources of livability. Part of this intrinsic indigeneity of the commoning nature of human creative power is an evolutionary product of the interactions between human beings as part of the life domain. Therefore, we are here ultimately speaking about more than human and more than production creative power. This creative power has never been purely or fully realized in its perfect commons forms as it has been subject to historically formed hierarchical relations, even prior to the agricultural revolution. However, due to such historical rootedness in reality and relative presence in commoning relations, it is always possible for humans to futuristically develop social formations under which the indigenous essence of the creative power as a fundamental commons is emancipated and almost fully actualized. The true value of, more than, human creative power as an essential commons. To avoid confusion and in accordance with the suggested differentiation between true value and fetish value, the use of word, labor, is proposed to be restricted to instances when it is exercised under the capitalist social formation. Instead, the more general term, creative power, of which, unalienated work, is one form, as employed when considering it in a general context or presupposing it under the commonest state of living. See notes too. In the commonest state of living, any value extracted is mutually compensated with, counter, value injected, so the commons and the relationships between them would persist. Marx was aware of the importance of the distinction between the so-called general and specific levels and attributed the confusion between them to the bourgeois political economy, which results in naturalizing, dehistoricizing capitalist relations. However, this distinction is not translated into terminological precision in his value theory. Marx's LTV can be reconstructed in a few ways by drawing on the idea of commoning. The concept of commoning usually refers to the social process of creating and managing commons, which are shared resources held in common and managed by a community. 
Marx's value theory is unique in emphasizing the social relations of value creation, including the role of capital and labor in the production process. By drawing on the idea of commoning, we can see that this socially necessary labor time includes not only the time required to produce the commodity but also the time required to manage and maintain the commons on which the production depends. Thus, the value of a commodity is not determined only by individual labor but also by the social, reproductive relations of commoning that sustain the production process. According to the communist perspective, human creative power is a fundamental commons interactively woven into the fabric of the commoning sources of livability. When appearing in its unalienated form and essence, it strives to create a future where the flourishing of all life becomes a genuine historical possibility. Therefore, by efficiently organizing and orchestrating socio-ecological production relations under the commonest state of living, human creative power plays a crucial role in realizing the telos of true value. Recently, the concept of labor as commons has gained traction among transformative scholars and activists in the global north, see Azzolini, 2016. This new theoretical tendency is not surprising, considering the recent resurgence of the idea of commons, commoning, the rise of digital modes of production, widespread corporate extraction of value out of digital commons in knowledge forms, and the growing movements for worker-owned companies and protecting natural commons and the indigenization of post-capitalist discourses in the global north. Additionally, there have been indigenous struggles to defend their lands and other natural resources in the global south as well as the anti-privatization movements inspired by the struggle for re-communalizing privatized public services and reclaiming urban public spaces. Highlighting the commoning aspect of labor, despite being in an embryonic stage, is a useful step forward. However, we cannot establish such a postulation about the nature of labor simply by accentuating the social and cooperative characteristics of individuals' capabilities to produce within capitalist production relations. Doing so would only address the formal cause of labor after it has been decommonized by capital while failing to take into account the other three aspects — the efficient, the material, and the final causes of capitalist value. Furthermore, productive labor has already lost its commoning essence by entering into capitalist commodity production relations. Beyond reductionist notions of commons and commoning the idea of commons as spaces independent from private ownership and state control potentially poses a challenge to the ideological dualism of market fundamentalism versus state centrism inherited from the Cold War. As a discourse to frame transformative praxis, commons can rejuvenate progressive responses to both neoliberalism and the potential return of statism, state controlled capitalism, state capitalism, or state socialism. However, there are already two major ways of conceptualizing commons that impair transformative capacity. These are not mutually exclusive. The first one limits the scope of commons to social relations shaped around natural or artificial common resources. This is not only popular among institutionalists like Eleanor Ostrom but also among many Marxist and eco-socialist theorists resulting in the treatment of commons as the objects of human actions and thus disintegrating the economic from the ecological. See Endnotes 3. The second is the perception of commons as shared, ownership, rather than, stewardship, and, right to govern. This reduces it to the third segment of the economy, the so-called shared, peer-to-peer, -peer, open access, in parallel with the public and private sectors. Being a sector alongside the public and private is, at best, a negation of only the extreme ideological perspectives, e.g., neoliberalism and statism. These approaches run the risk of making the idea less transformative and susceptible to being incorporated into the civilizing meta-mechanisms of capital. See Endnote 4. Replacing capitalist, accumulation by dispossession, with, accumulation by co-option, is not meaningfully progressive. See Endnote 5. Therefore, it is the negation of this negation that is emancipatory, and the notional expansion of commons becomes an ontological base for the post-capital emancipatory praxis and a normative, axiological base for defining value. Commons encompass more than just tangible entities such as common pool resources, public spaces, shared ownership, or commonwealth institutions. To avoid reductionism in understanding commons and commoning, the Aristotelian theory of causation can be used. 
By applying the four causes to the concept of commons, a more nuanced and comprehensive understanding can be obtained that recognizes the multiple dimensions and levels of commons and commoning. This includes the agential, ecological, and social structural, as well as the iterative processes through which they are sustained and regenerated. A commons is a living ecosystem, or a complex, species being, in and of itself, which, according to the Aristotelian doctrine of causality, consists of four constituting elements. Firstly, the efficient cause is the activities of the commoners, both human and non-human, and their subjectivities, which include skills, knowledge, agency, experiences, and capabilities that are actualized through the process of building and maintaining commons, as well as their organs as tools and tools as organs. CN Note 6. Secondly, the material cause is a set of resources that are held in, conserved, enhanced, and governed collectively, as well as the flows of energy and mass in and out of the commons as an open system. Thirdly, the formal cause is its structure, or what Marx would refer to as an ensemble of social, ecological, relations, along with their corresponding forms of cooperation and conviviality across a plurality of subjects, as well as the norms, rules, evaluative measures, and mutual rights and responsibilities that regulate these relations and guide actions toward the realization of the final cause. Finally, the final cause is the self-sustaining and life-regenerating function of the commons as a living being seeking a good life through the transformative praxis of commoning by the commoners, refer to De Angelis, 2022, Mao, 2022. A redefined notion of commons, informed by the Aristotelian theory of causation, could provide several benefits when applied to understanding the nature of human creative power. Human creative power, or labor in a general or free sense, can be considered as commons consisting of the four elements described above. Its efficient cause is rooted in the reproductive work that takes place in households and communities. Human creative power is organized and sustained within the care and community-based oikos, s, with recognition given to the true value of all forms of creative power in contributing to more than human well-living. However, when human creative power is subsumed under capitalist production relations, it is the capitalist class that takes on the efficient role, controlling the labor process through the hiring and firing of workers, setting wages and working conditions, and using technology and resources to extract surplus value. The material cause of human creative power is comprised of the physiological concreteness of bodily features and organs, the matter energy bodily metabolism, and the intellect effective capacities for creativity and productivity at both the individual and collective levels. These elements constantly contribute to and are regenerated in a healthy commonist state of living. This is in contrast to the physical or use value of labor performed solely to produce capitalist value. The formal cause of human creative power as a commons encompasses the interconnectedness of bodily organs and the microbiome, as well as the social interconnectedness and solidarity based on the principles of reciprocity, mutual aid, and cooperation among all value producers, including non-human beings. This social form recognizes the interdependence of human and non-human creativity and prioritizes the well-being of people and the environment over the accumulation of capital. Inherent to the activity of commoning is the eroding of distinctions between the ruled and the ruler, which transcends the capitalist disintegration between the social and political aspects of commoning. This contrasts with the formal cause of value under capitalism, which involves the formal organization of labor, including the division of labor, the hierarchy of management and labor, and the legal and institutional frameworks that regulate labor relations, all of which are characterized by the exploitation of labor to generate profit. The final cause of human creative power as a commons is the commonest state of, more than human, living well together, which serves as both a commoning praxis and a project of commoning. This is the driving force behind the activities that prioritize the creation of true value for the benefit of the commoners over increasing productivity, reducing labor costs, and expanding markets, all in pursuit of greater profits as the capitalist final cause of production. The praxis of commoning that ensures the endurance of the commons is not an unexciting repetitive struggle for the mere sake of survival through a universal commitment to a simple mass energy balance principle. Rather, it is an act of alterity, or constant reinvention of the self and surroundings, with partly unexpected results, conditioned with and in response to a continually changing environment. 
Existential causality should be seen as an evolutionary iterative transitional process rather than a conjunction of events. This means that a commons is both an entity, although with fuzzy contours, and an evolutionary process through which the final cause acts as a dynamic determinant by reorganizing the process in its own ultimate image. <laughs>